Liz, you're handling this better than me right now. This My wing mouth. Do you see? I'm like crying. It's a bit on fire. This wing is terrible. Hi everyone, welcome to RCTV's very first taping of Winging It, Reading, where we ask Reading celebrities questions while trying to attempt to eat hot chicken wings. Hey, this idea is not original. We're borrowing it from the YouTube TV's uh, The Hot One starring Sean Evans. Hey, I'm no Sean Evans, but I am a Reading resident and looking forward to doing this. Hey, for our first episode, we're welcoming our Reading celebrity, you know her, she's the owner, operator, and founder of Whiteland Books, Liz Whiteland. Thanks, Mom. Hi. So Liz, do you like hot wings? Um, I can't say that I'm much of a wing eater. I tend to be more of a boneless chicken connoisseur. But uh, excited to go on this wing journey with you. Good, thank you. We can uh, maybe work on that in the future that maybe we have wingless, <laughs> but uh, we went with the standards. Hey, we're at Bun Ratty's today. Uh, Bun Ratty's turns out that there happens to be my favorite chicken wing place in Reading. Uh, is also my favorite tavern in Reading. Uh, we're not eating Bun Ratty's standard wings. They made us special wings, and we're gonna gonna uh, work on those. And we've got a plate of ten in front of us. So Liz, our very first wing is Bun Ratty's own spicy chili sauce. It's a very simple, it's no big thing. I think we're not gonna have a problem. The theme of the show is we're gonna have a chicken wing and ask a question. Have a chicken wing, ask another question. I've got my list of questions uh, that some of your friends or maybe enemies told me <laughs> that you might be interested in, and so we're gonna take that. So, hey, let's top, top it off with our very first chicken wing. Ooh, sticky. A little sticky. Cheers. Delicious. Oh, that is delicious. No big deal. Mm. So Liz, after years of technical sales, you decided to go against the trend and take on Amazon and open up a bookstore. Everyone in Reading is so glad you did. What made you decide to open a bookstore and why in Reading? Well, the second part of that is easy. In Reading because I live in Reading and uh, something that for as long as I've lived here, since 2002, um, I've heard people saying, what this town really needs is a bookstore. And I always agreed with that. Um, yeah, after many years in corporate America, working uh, on the internet as it developed and grew, working in marketing and in consulting, um, I had a lot of varied business training. But um, and it brought me plenty of joy over the years in different ways. But my true love has always been between the covers of a book. And so when I kept hearing what this town needs is a bookstore, I was like, yes, it does. And I think I'm going to look and see if I can make that happen. Um, so I found uh, consultants who actually help people learn about how to open a bookstore. I took an online course. I went to an in-person boot camp and, and uh, couldn't turn back after that. That's fantastic. We're so glad you did. Hey, uh, let's jump to the second question before the chicken wing. You and I are casual acquaintances but I consider you a friend, and we have a history of touching base together, seems like every summer. One particular reason, and we've done so for the last seven or eight years. Could you tell people why you and I become <laughs> friends over the summer? Absolutely, well, we become friends because Bob is a member of Rotary, and has been very involved in the uh, fall street fair. And I am a musician. I'm part of a couple of different groups. I'm in a band, but uh, the thing that I work on with Bob is I'm in an acapella group. And Bob, thankfully, is a big fan of Talk to the Hand, my acapella group. And so he invites us to perform at the Fall Street Fair every year. So that's how we know each other. So if you haven't heard Liz doing uh, Talk to the Hand with her, her friends, her college friends, uh, they're fantastic. At the Reading Street Fair, they try to perform every year. and just one of my highlights of the whole street fair. It's just a fantastic, uh, fantastic take. Liz, do you do the beatbox or singing? What's your specialty with the group? Um, I'm, <laughs> I wouldn't say any of us would call ourselves beatboxers. We do do a little bit of vocal percussion, but uh, we are all, we all sing and we all um, change parts. So there's only four of us. And if you are a musician or a singer and you're familiar with these sort of standard soprano one, soprano two, alto one, alto two format of an all women's group, which we are, um, I would say that each of us in our group can cover three out of those four. 
and so we move around depending on the arrangement. And we all do, we do all of our own arrangements, uh, save for a couple of special ones that have been done by good friends. That's fantastic. Okay, let's move on to the second wing. The second wing is also a bun variety uh, sauce. This is their buffalo sauce. Ah, yeah. uh, shouldn't be tough, should be pretty good. That's nice. Very nice. Excellent. Mm. So Liz, I hear Talk to the Hand isn't the only band you're in. That's right. I hear you're also in a band called the Backtrack Band. Could this you tell me about that? I would be delighted to tell you about that. Um, the Backtrack Band is a an oldies band, primarily focused on the 60s. Although we do do some 50s and some 70s, but we're mostly rooted in 60s music. Um, it's a six-piece band. We have uh, guitar, bass, drums, keyboards, three vocalists. And um, part of the reason it falls in line with what I already did is that um, the three vocalists, we have uh, the ability to take advantage of all the great rich harmonies from 60s music. Um, so it's a lot of fun. And the musicians, the instrumentalists, are phenomenal. Uh, it's a complete pleasure and privilege to work with the incredibly skilled uh, musicians that are. Where do they usually play? We play, we kind of play all over. I mean, right now in COVID times, we're kind of uh, in not many places. We do tons of concerts on the Common. We've been in Reading a couple of times, um, but we've been all over. We've been part of the uh, Yankee Homecoming in Newburyport. We've performed for things in Falmouth and you know, all over sort of New England, mostly rooted in Massachusetts, up in Maine actually a fair bit in the summers. Um, and we perform at restaurants and pubs and um, used to have kind of a regular standing gig almost at uh, Absolutely Fa Fabulous in Melrose oh, right. every okay. month for years. Um, you know, we've done anniversary parties, weddings. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, lots of places. Do you have any gigs planned or because of COVID times you can't right now? Well, I will say that we did just get reconfirmed for uh, some of the concerts on the Common that were canceled this past summer. We will be in Wilmington on July 21st. Uh, and we were supposed to be playing the Tryon on stage at the Topsfield Fair this past fall. We will be there next fall. That's awesome. Uh, so right now those are the only definitive things we have on the calendar. Excellent, great. Let's move on to chicken wing number three. Uh, hold on a little pause. And through the magic of television, <laughs> I now have wine. <laughs> okay, moving on to uh, uh, wing number three. This is the Sriracha wings. No big deal. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that is good. I put a large blop on my <laughs> wing, and uh, so I'm feeling it, but so far so good. Excellent. Excellent. So besides your beautiful singing voice, I believe you also studied theater. I hear that you competed against a famous Bostonian actor <laughs> in the Massachusetts Drama Festival. Could you tell us about that and who it was? Mm. Yes, absolutely. Um, so yes, I've been involved in the theater since high school and through college. Um, and in high school, even though I, um, I grew up on the North Shore and I attended Masconomet, but both of my brothers went to St. John's Prep, which of course is an all boys school. Very strong theater program. And when I was a freshman, my brother, Doug, who was a senior at the time, said, I'm picking you up after school. I'm bringing you back with me. You're going to try out for the play. And from there, I ended up doing many shows at St. John's Prep, including all the uh, entries into the State Drama Festival. So my junior year, um, we won the Massachusetts State Drama Festival and we beat Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Yeah, so my picture was on the front of the Boston Globe. He was just a footnote among many <laughs> on an interior page, but uh, this is a great object lesson about peaking too early. So he, I would say, got the last laugh. Maybe he'd have you on a show. Maybe. Maybe he'll put Maybe you in Maybe you'll hear about this and we'll eat wings together. There someday. you go. Do you recall what show you did to beat Matt Damon? So that would have been Tartuffe. That's a okay. Moliere play. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Great. Thank you. I think we're moving on to wing number four. Yes. So this is the Lucky Dog. We're now at a Scoville rating of 29,800. So they're going to start to get a little more intense now. So let's try uh, the Lucky Dog. All right. Let's 
It's kind of fruity too. Yep. Not bad. I can handle that. Yep. So ladies, I'm gonna, uh, you know in a bookstore? Let's play Name That Book. Oh no. <laughs> you mentioned that you um, happen to like books. So I'm gonna give you some famous first lines of books. Okay. And if you can try to name them. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. That is A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Yay! Excellent. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of number four Privet Drive were proud to say they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. That is the first line of the first Harry Potter book. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, J.K. Rowling. Thank and you. And what is it called in England? When originally it was actually originally called Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Really? Okay. But apparently they were concerned that the American audience didn't have an understanding of alchemy, I can only presume, and they changed <laughs> the name to Sorcerer's Stone. A nice little uh, background information that you get <laughs> when you own a bookstore. It was a bright, cold day in April, and the, cl the clocks were striking 13. Sounds like 1984 by George Orwell. You seem to know your books. That's three out of three. So far, we'll see. A couple more. If you went to find Cherry Tree Lane, all you have to do is ask the policeman at the crossroads. A little more challenge. Yeah, that is familiar, and I am not. I think it. the key there is Cherry Tree Lane. I feel that you are right. <laughs> Nonetheless, I don't know, Bob. You're going to have to tell me. Mary Poppins. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. I was actually just talking about this the other day about how the um, the actual book is quite a bit darker than yeah. the, than the movie. So well, Walt had to uh, lighten it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. All uh -huh. children except one grow up. In keeping with the theme of books that Walt Disney adapted into films, Peter Pan. Excellent. And I think I've got one more here. The day she was born was the happiest day in her parents' life. I'm gonna kick myself when I don't know this. So my wife added this one. I had frankly never heard of this book, but she tells me it's very famous, yeah, Chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum. Children's book. I can tell yes. you where it's sitting on our shelves right now in the chapter book section over at Whiteland Books. Excellent. <laughs> And let's move on to another wing. All right. That uh, that last wing sort of had a lingering after effect. Lingering hot. Okay, now we're moving on to Kolohi Kid. Kolohi Kid. Uh, this is our number five wing. So we're starting to get up. This is when they start to get a little more serious. Yeah. So Liz, rumor has it that you're a huge West Wing fan. This is true. And that Julie Hill, who played Charlie on West Wing, actually yep. gave you a call for your birthday. <laughs> By the way, I have to plug the TV show site, also with Julie Hill. Uh, <clears throat> so that must have been a real treat for you. That was. Uh, yes, my husband and my daughter um, took advantage of the Cameo uh, website online and I think <laughs> ridiculously excellent video from Julie Hill, um, which was not brief. My husband was like, I can't believe he's still talking. <laughs> uh, and in which he also referenced the fact that I relentlessly watch that show on repeat, which I do and have for many years. So speaking of watching that show over and over again, tell me what happened to your wedding video? <laughs> I guess you've been speaking with my husband. So yes, long before um, Netflix, when you could just stream shows on demand, long before DVDs, before I had my West Wing DVD box set, which I do own, um, I used to record on our VCR each week's episode of the West Wing. And at one point in 2001, not very long after we had gotten married, I did indeed record an episode of West Wing over our wedding video. So was it a second copy or is your wedding video gone? Well, 
it's pretty much gone. It should be clarified that this wasn't like, oh, we hired a videographer and got a okay. wedding video. We very specifically made the choice not to do that. Uh -huh. All due respect to the camera people of the world. Um, we hadn't planned to document it that way, but we had a friend who took a video. Um, in theory, they still have a little, you know, the original different kind You're of right, format right. before it gets transferred to uh, VHS. So it might still be out there somewhere. But this way you have your wedding video star in Dooley Hill and everyone else exactly. from the West Wing. Exactly right. Awesome. Let's move on to number six, Los Calientes. The green one. And I can read from here, Bob, that it is apparently a 36,000 on the scale. So we're getting a little warm. So these other sauces are from Heatness.com, which sponsors the TV show, The Hot Ones. All right. It's a nice taste. Mm. That is nice. And dare I say, it's a little bit caught in my tooth. Forgive me, camera. <laughs> That's going to happen. Yep. Hey, uh... Yep, this is kicking in. Have you met, ever met any of your childhood crushes? Maybe mm. Donny Osmond? Yes, I have. What did uh, you guys talk about? Not much, because Donny Osmond was far more interested in my husband than he was in me. So yes, my very dear friend Gregory um, used to work at the Wang Center and um, was very involved in sort of special events and dealing directly with a lot of the celebrities who came through there. And so we got to have a wonderful uh, viewing of a Donny Osmond concert and then got to meet him backstage for a little reception afterwards. And Donny Osmond having no interest in hearing how I've been a big fan since, I don't know, 1977, was very taken with my husband's English accent and just wanted to talk to him. So he was perfectly nice, but just maybe not so interested in me. Hey, I, uh, well, I guess let's move on to another wing. Number, so this is the, let's take a look here. The heartbeat hot sauce. 66,000 scopes. That's going to be quite a jump up from that last one. And if you can't see from as far away as you are, my eyes are already starting to water. So. Yeah, I don't know about you. I'm starting to break a little sweat. Yep, I am feeling a little warm. De and um, Be careful around your eyes. Yes, that, good point. That's the line that Sean pro Evans tip, warns everybody tip. about. All right, jumping in. So far, not that oh, bad. Nope, there it is. <coughs> it starts to come? It starts to come. Right in the back of the throat. Okay. Hey, I hear you're a, uh, mm. <laughs> a hula hoop ninja. <laughs> oh, look what I have here. Oh, good lord. Just a couple of hula hoops. Liz, would you try some? Um, we can go right out here. Yeah. Would you like one, two, three, or four? Well, here's the thing, Bob. Those are actually child hoops, and I know that doesn't seem like it should make a difference, but um, adult hoops are actually larger and heavier, but okay. I will give it a go with one and we'll see. Okay. If I had more room, I could show you some of the like, trickiest stuff. Ooh. There's not room to do that gracefully. Um, so So Liz, I hear you love owls. Why owls? And were they actually in the store? They were in the store. Uh, why owls? I don't know. I just, I think they're beautiful. I like that they are, they just look fierce and terrifying and yet still somehow sweet and cuddly. I think it's a great combination. Um, and yes, we were very lucky um, to have an event around a book called Owling. Uh, now I'm not going to get the subtitle correct. But anyway, the author, uh, he and his wife actually run an owl rescue okay. out in central Massachusetts. And he unbelievably was willing to bring owls into the store. He does; They do do visits to schools and things, but they don't usually bring the owls to commercial locations. But he heard how owl crazy I was. And so he brought several owls, owls to the store. And uh, it was phenomenal. We also, people were super excited about it. And in fact, we had uh, 
uh, apologies in retrospect to the fire department of Reading because we had so many people crammed into that store wow. that even though we tried to content, you know, maintain methods of egress, we were well beyond our fire limit. I'll assume this was pre-COVID. Oh yeah, this was uh, probably 18 months ago. Okay. Um, so yeah, it was amazing. That's fantastic. Let's uh, move on to uh, number eight. And number eight is? I O Thor's Hammer. It's, I don't have a total number. It's, their, it's number eight out of ten. But we, yeah, we know we're moving up. So and it's, we're moving up. It's gonna be bad. <laughs> oh, that one sounds feels scary. Oh, I'm gonna be profoundly sorry. <laughs> Not very long. <laughs> wow. So. Liz, what excites you the most about Whiteland Books today? What are you most excited about? Why are you thrilled to go back to work every day? Yeah, you know, the being in the book world is even more than I had anticipated. It's, it's fantastic for all the reasons I thought it would be in terms of my uh, just exposure to book upon book upon book. But being part of that community, the broader book and publishing world, um, you meet authors, you hear them speak. Um, if you're looking for inspiration but don't want to attend a religious service, I can do nothing better than offer you an entrance into the book world because as you hear different authors speak about different topics, you will be filled with inspiration about so many different things. It's also remarkable that as an industry, bookstores um, are nothing but supportive of each other. So within the whole community, any store will do anything to help another store. We will run a book over three towns across, really? you know, just be like, oh, you're out of this and you need it for a customer, we've got it. Um, you, uh, you need advice about how to do something, we've done it before, we'll tell you how. It was amazing as I was opening up and as I was learning about it, but it's an ongoing um, just community of constant support and love and camaraderie. It's amazing. That's great. Liz, you're handling this better than me right now. This My wing mouth is, do you see? I'm like crying. It's a bit on fire. <laughs> this wing is terrible. Hey, what is something you miss the most now during COVID? What are you anxious to get back into normal life? Well, I'll tell you. I. Uh, <laughs> My husband and I do love to go out to eat a lot, um, and this is the first time I've been mask-free inside any place other than my own home in a very long time, and uh, happy to do it for the show, um, but I am looking forward to just being out with friends and uh, in a just kind of a normal way. We eat outside a lot, and we are certainly doing our part uh, by getting... <coughs> <Excuse me. laughs> getting takeout almost constantly. We are trying to support our restaurant community um, here in Reading and in any drivable town, we're constantly getting takeout, but I, I miss being able to gather with people. Great. Are you ready for number nine? Uh, first, I just wanna see if the wine helps. <laughs> I always had a philosophy that the alcohol helps break down the pepper oils. I don't know if it does. It sounds great. Here's hoping it numbs us at the very least. Okay. Number nine. Oh. Widowmaker. <laughs> this is 682,000 total. So in theory, roughly 10x. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to survive these next two wings, Bob. I desperately want to go back to the first ones. They were great, huh? The first they were. ones. Remember, remember those days <laughs> of the early wings. Might be running out of napkins already. Okay. My bite might be a little small on me. Oh dear Lord, no. Okay. Liz, is there a book in particular that you would recommend right now for people to give you a call and reserve and come in and buy from Whiteland Books? Yeah, there's a lot of really great stuff out right now. Um, although I, you could hit me any day of the week and I'd be like, oh, and now there's this. Um, a recent favorite um, is a, a book called Hench. 
and the, <coughs> excuse me, the premise, hold on, I need another drink. That's okay. The premise, really join of this you book, yes, the premise of Hench is that in a world, you know, regular contemporary world, however, superheroes and supervillains exist, just as part of the regular deal. The main character of this book is a contract worker. She's a temp worker. And so she goes to the temp agency periodically and does work for supervillains, generally doing things on spreadsheets, doing a lot of data stuff. And through various circumstances, she starts doing analysis about the damage, collateral damage that superheroes cause are actually worse for society. And she ends up becoming a supervillain. And it's just like this nerd power, oh, spreadsheet-based supervillain plot. It's fantastic. It's really quirky and great. How about a kid's book? Kid's book. Ah. Oh, excuse me. So this one's been out for a while, but I love it so much, I will talk about it. There's a book called Song for a Whale. And, uh, <laughs> Lord, preserve Take me from this Take your time, we're not in a rush. <laughs> Song for a Whale, I believe by Lynn Kelly. One of my great shames as a bookstore owner is that I frequently forget authors if I don't have it in front of me. It is a story about a girl in seventh grade who is deaf, and she goes to a regular school but has an aide with her. And in her science class, one day the teacher shows them a video of a whale. And the whale is um, half humpback whale and half, I can't remember what the other species is right now because my brain is melting. And so as you know, whales speak in song. Mm -hmm. And this whale, because he is a hybrid of two species, sings at a frequency that other whales cannot understand. And this deaf girl decides that she is going to make a song that this whale can hear so he knows somebody can hear him and is listening. So she works with the music department, she puts together this whole thing and the right frequencies for this whale and ends up going on this epic journey with her grandmother to find the naturalists who are tracking this whale so that she can share this song with the whale. It's phenomenal. That sounds great. Yeah, it's really great. Ladies, I think we're ready to move on to the last stab. Oh my God. Okay. They call it the last dab because on the hot ones, they add one more dab onto the wing. So I'm supposed to put more goo on this than it's already on here? Oh, yep. Okay. If you're willing, you don't have to. I'm willing to try. This is that one that takes forever to come out. It does take a while. It's very slow pour. Well, it looks don't, like a little... Don't go crazy. Well, I just did what I could do. I will try the same. Maybe. Okay. And. Do cheers. not try this at home. <laughs> cheers. Cheers to you. It's a little warm. So, <laughs> Liz Whitelum, you made it. You ran the gauntlet. You did the 10 wings. You did the last dab. This camera, this camera, or this camera. Sorry, I stole that right from Hot Ones. This camera, this camera, or this camera. Feel free to tell us anything you'd like about Whitelum books and why we should be going there. Well, for one thing, at Whitelum books, we will never make you do this. We did it for you, so you don't have to. <laughs> um, I hope you will come see us at Whiteland Books. We are, um, we consider ourselves a small but mighty bookstore in a not very large space. We, on average, have between 9,000 and 9,500 books on the shelves at any given time. Um, we have the ability to rapidly replenish what we have on our shelves, so we might only have one or two copies of something. 
But if we don't have it, we can get it for you usually in a matter of days. Um, in addition to our books that we choose very carefully to try to reflect the interests of our community, um, every book that's in there, I haven't read every single one of them. I've read a lot of them, but they're all there for a reason. I work very closely with all my sales reps and with uh, authors and with other bookstores and other people in the community. Every book is in there on purpose, and so it's worth your time. And in addition to the books, we have a lot of great, um, in the business, we call any non-book merchandise sidelines, and we have a lot of super fun sidelines. We have lots of games, we have puzzles, we have journals, we have greeting cards, we have a lot of bookish things like book themed tea, um, you know, book lights, book marks, literary candles. Uh, there's something really fun for everybody. There's a lot to explore and find in the store. So I hope that if, as a citizen of Reading or any nearby community that might be glued to RCTV, that you come down to 610 Main Street and give us a try and see what we have. And what's the best way for them to reserve a book or to check on a book? Should they just pop in, send you an email or phone? Or what's yeah, the best they way? can email or they can call. Um, you can email Liz at Whiteland Books, that's me, or info at whitelandbooks.com. You can call us uh, Monday through Saturday, 10 to 5, Sunday, 12 to 5, 781 779 1833. And uh, you, can, you can check our website, you can order from our website. Those books come directly from our warehouse. Those are not the books that we have in the store. Those are actually the hundreds of thousands of books we have access to in our primary warehouse. So you can go online and order directly and have things shipped to your home as well. That sounds fantastic. Liz, thank you very much for joining us for our very first recording of this. Thank you, Bon Ratty, for the fantastic chicken wings and the location. We hope to see you soon. Uh, we're at RCTV, please let us know. Uh, what, who else you would like to see on the show? Thank you very much. Thanks, Bob. Thank you.